Now we are going to bottle. So to bottle, we need to get our beer into the bottling bucket. Very, very important stage of this. You gotta make sure that the spigot is closed to start off with because if it's open, you're gonna start pouring beer in here and then it'll end up on the ground and that will be very, very sad. Second really important thing, we have our sugar. So the sugar's gotta go in ideally first you can do it at the end, it's a little bit better if you put it at the beginning because that means that as we're transferring the beer over, it'll be stirring in the entire time. So I'm going to put my sugar water in here. Then we got to get the beer over to the bowling bucket. Now this is important because uh, at this point, you do not want to aerate your beer. You want it to have as little oxygen left in it as possible because otherwise you'll get weird tastes in it when you're actually bottle conditioning as you're carbonating. So, it's still too bad that there is no smell vision because that smells glorious. This is what we use siphons for. Where's my siphon? So the siphon works as such. The hose goes down into the beer, I mean the ball and bucket. We're gonna pull beer up with this pump and then push it through the hose. This will take, usually takes a couple of pushes, but now it's all gravity. Because there's a hole down at the bottom of the hose, the liquid, the beer, is going to flow out the bottom of the hose. Since the liquid is flowing out the bottom of the hose, it generates pressure or, neg or negative pressure on the liquid up here, and essentially just by that force, we pull more and more of the beer through the hose. This takes a few minutes, but uh, once it's all said and done, we'll have all of the beer will be out of the bucket and into the bottling bucket. We're closing in on the end, so the bucket's running low, and you'll notice that I've tilted it to get a little bit more pressure and to avoid the muck at the bottom. Now, in this case, this is already secondary, so this, this has been transferred from one bucket to another bucket before. So there isn't so much trouble at the bottom. You can see there's a little bit of yeastiness, but not a lot. Just gonna give it another couple of minutes, and then we'll be ready to bottle. You can actually see the collection of yeast at the bottom. We're very, very close to being done now. I want to avoid pulling any of that settled yeast over into my bottling bucket. I want to try and get as much over into the bottling bucket as possible though. So this is going to be one of those judgment calls, but got to be careful about not filling up my bottling bucket with yeast. That's probably about as close as I dare get. Okay, we can set up the wand. Wand goes over here. So here will come out of here. And then the other important thing is we're going to need caps. So without caps, this doesn't work. Important note on caps. This is my capper. Now, if you buy a beer kit, often you will get a little hand capper in it. Uh, me and my friends had a little incident with the hand capper where maybe on the third or fourth brew that we were doing, the hand capper just started exploding bottles. And I no longer believe in hand cappers because of that. I just buy one of these, 50 bucks. Saves you so much hassle. This has never broken a bottle. Amazing $50 buy. 
Gotta go get some bottles, and then we can get cracking. As we get going, it's important to remember that stirring is, is crucial. I have in the past failed to stir at this point and have had the sugary beer be at the bottom and be and have unsugary beer at the top and essentially you get half your bottles being explodingly full of carbon dioxide and the other half essentially being flat. But you have to be careful how you stir because you don't want to introduce air into this beer. So I do a very careful kind of crosswise motion that clearly creates turbulence inside the beer, but doesn't affect the uh, surface very much. To make sure that there is mixing inside the beer, but there isn't so much in inclusion of air into the beer. This doesn't have to be too thorough, but it's probably a bad idea to skip it. bottles, got to open up my spigot. So you'll notice this turns this wand. So I do got to be careful about the wand itself being pointed in the right direction if you have a little kink in your hose, which you probably will get. And then your bottle goes on the wand and there's that little pointy piece at the, the tip. When you push that in, beer comes out and you can watch the beer fill up the bottle. I usually aim to leave a little bit of headspace, but not too much. Remember that when you pull the bottle out, all of this space that the hose is taking up, uh, that the bottling one is taking up, is going to be empty. And so the aim is to have some of the neck be empty. So, not sure if you can see it here, but we have about this much headspace inside our bottle. That's actually a little bit more than I usually aim for, but it's not a bad one. There we go. Let's do a couple more. This is very, very easily turned into a two-person job because while I am filling bottles, a second person who isn't holding the camera could be capping these as I go and that will speed up any such process significantly. There's an additional step after this that if you have a third person and a functioning printer, they can be slapping labels onto your beer bottles as you go. That depends on whether you want to actually label your beers. Many people don't or many people just use different cap colors to identify which bottle was what but I like to go all out and put labels on my bottles. Next step is capping. So I have my caps in sanitizer. Gonna make sure that those caps are sanitized. There's different ways you can use this piece of equipment. You can either put the cap on the bottle, drop the capper, crank, Now you have a capped bottle. Alternatively, there's a little magnet in here and you can clip the, the uh, well, I should re-sanitize that since I touched it. You can put the cap into the capper, grab yourself a bottle, drop that, crank down, voila. And that's how it goes. This can be very therapeutic when you need some anger to work out. We have reached the end of bottling. So you can see our army of little bottles. They don't have labels yet, but they got a couple of weeks before they are sufficiently carbonated that they're worth drinking anyway, so we'll just let them hang out for a while. What little beer was left when we were done bottling? We used it to get a gravity. So final gravity is roughly 1.013. 
And once we get back to our notebook, we can take some notes on that, write it down, and make sure that uh, we got an alcohol calculation, because it's always good to know how alcoholic your beer turned out. And that is bottling. Let's finish up this rat in a cage Kölsch. So today is 4.9. I'm almost too many years old. So in 4.9, we bottled uh, about 50 bottles. I should probably actually go count and make sure I write down the right number. Important numbers, I believe it was 4.4 ounces of uh, bottling sugar. Brought to boil and cooled. Cooled. So those are the important things. How many balls did you get? How much balling sugar did you use? The rest of it is pretty much mechanical. And then that note is done.